So this morning, as I mentioned, we do have a missionary that's coming in just a moment to share with us. And I just, uh, I was kind of talking to, to Rachel and, and her mom and her stepdad this morning as we were, you know, getting ready. And it just, it's one of those things where uh, this wasn't really planned. It just happened the way that it did. But uh, when uh, I was given the opportunity to choose from a couple of Sundays as far as when we would have Rachel come and share, I just randomly picked the 15th, not really thinking about it, and then I'm like, hey, wait, that's 30 for Freedom Weekend, and so yesterday I ran 30 for Freedom, which, as I mentioned earlier, raises funds and awareness to help uh, get victims of human trafficking out of that situation and find restoration, and, and that's what Rachel is going to be doing. She's going to Thailand to minister to help victims of human trafficking, and it's just, it's one of those things where I didn't plan it, but the Holy Spirit knew what he was doing when he put all these things together in the same weekend, and so it's just so fun, and so I'm not going to steal too much of Rachel's thunder, and so, but uh, at this time, if you guys are welcome, this is my cousin, Rachel Nimlos. My name is Rachel Nimlos, and I recently have been approved to be a missionary to Bangkok, Thailand for the year to help end human trafficking. Ending human trafficking is like one of my biggest passions. I want to be a part of the generation that ends human trafficking. I want to see men, women, and, and children freed from this, and just, I want them to just be restored, just like God has for us. So. I will be going to work under Dana and Bridget Metcalf, and I was able to go in 2019, and when I was there, it was a different ministry opportunity pretty much every day. We were working in the prison ministry with the women, we were working uh, with the homeless, we were working a lot with uh, going down to the Klung Tao to the railroad kids and teaching them English just to help them so that one day that they don't need to live in a lifestyle of poverty, but they can find jobs as translators or sales representatives in Thailand. But our main ministry that we were doing was sealed ministry. It's a ministry that helps uh, women, children, and even men get out of human trafficking. It, it's so heartbreaking because Thailand is one of the most, uh, the most, uh, what's the right word? The human trafficking is so prevalent there in the country. There's about six known red light districts that we went to that cater to what whatever people like. Like there's a district for women, there's a district for men, there's a district for lady boys and, and children too, which is so heartbreaking. One of the things that we did when I was there in 2019 was I worked at an English camp where we went into a Buddhist school and we got to teach the children about Jesus and about how there's a God up there who loves them and that one of the things that we were doing there was trying to teach them uh, that what they're doing is is so heartbreaking that a lot of times in Thailand the the red light district is treated as an after school job so these kids will go to school and then afterwards they'll go work in the red light district to make money and to bring it home for their families so when I was there I had a little eight-year-old boy come up to talk to me and he was so excited he was telling me about his life but one of the things that he told me was when he grew up that he wanted to become a lady boy. He knew that the only way to make money and the only way to bring it to his family was to dress up as a drag queen, to live another lifestyle, to become essentially a lady, lady boy. And it, it's so heartbreaking because that's what he wanted. That was his highest aspiration in life. So uh, going back, I coming back here, I fell in love with the Thai people, the Thai culture, the Thai food, it was amazing. <laughs> but but I knew I needed to go back, but I felt like I was called to go to college. So the missionary who I was working with had a nephew who had a small ministry college in Arizona. So I just graduated with my bachelor's degree in social work and a minor in biblical studies. And after that, I went to go work at the AZ, the Arizona um, Assemblies of God District Camp. And there, it was two months ago that God called me to go back to Thailand. And I was like, okay, sure God, in like January, and God was like, no, August 23rd. So I will be going back to Thailand in about eight days. And I'm so excited because a lot of the things that we're going to be doing is going back into the red light districts and going back to teach these 
these women, one of the main things that we'll be doing is teaching the women and the children English so that they can go have different jobs. One of the things that I'll be doing is helping with the church out there, and the church does a lot with um, a small coffee shop and bakery. So a lot of these women, when they leave that lifestyle, they'll have a place to stay and they'll have a place to work. And we have other jobs for them open too, such as translators, because they're, they're getting to know English through the Bible. We're giving out Bibles as, as well and walking through the red light districts. And a lot of these women in the red light districts and the men and even the pimps who, as scary as that sounds, they want to talk to you. And you start building relationships with these people and they just start to start to ask questions and they start to want to know more about Jesus and about your life. So it's very, very crazy doing that. So Romans 10, 14 says, how can they call on the one they have not believed in? How can they believe in the one whom they have not heard? How can they hear without somebody preaching to them? There's 88% of the population in Thailand that do not know Jesus. They've never had a chance to hear about a loving God who, who's their savior. And that is one of my big passions is, is going to tell the Thai people that, that they are loved. The Thai people are very Buddhist. There's a saying that to be Thai is to be Buddhist. And the Buddhists believe a lot in reincarnation. And what they don't know is they keep looking forward to the next life. They're like, oh, when I get reincarnated, I'll have a new life. When I get reincarnated, it'll be better. But God died, Jesus died for us so that we could have a new life here on this earth. So that we don't need to do the whole reincarnation, but we can access that new life here and now. And that's just one of the big words that God has been speaking to me as I've been praying about Thailand is the word restoration. God wants to come and restore the Thai people. He wants them to know that they can have a new life here on this earth and that it doesn't matter if, if you've been trafficked because God wants to restore you. Restoration is a process, but there's a beautiful finish at the end. And that's what the Thai people need to hear. So when I go back to Thailand, I'll be helping again with the prison ministry, the homeless ministry. I'll be helping out with teaching English to the kids in uh, who live on the railroads, who live in the slums. And I'll also be doing a lot with the sealed ministry and going back into the red light to hand out Bibles, to, to bring awareness to um, just the tragedy that is human trafficking. So there are a few ways, too, that I need your guys' help. I need prayer because, you guys, prayer moves, to, moves mountains and it opens doors. And God can do so much with just a simple prayer and just a little bit of faith. But also, too, I need help financially getting there. I need to raise $10,000. This is a complete mission strip. This is not paid. So it seems silly, but this is my passion. This is my biggest passion, is seeing women restored and seeing children freed. So I need to raise $10,000, which sounds like a big number, but I keep saying God's will, God's bill, and right now I'm at 80% of funds raised. So I just need to get the rest of the way there. But... One of the things, though, is this is not home. Heaven is home. And I'm just trying to bring as many people to heaven. And so, Micah, thank you so much for letting me speak. You guys have such an awesome pastor. And thank you guys for listening to me for a few minutes. Thank you so much, Rachel, for coming, for sharing. You guys know our heart. This is a matter that is really important to Pastor Lorna. And I don't bring her in because she's my cousin. I bring her in because this is so needed. The ministry of restoration, of rescuing, of, of helping people get out of a life of human trafficking where they, they, it's not even their choice. Some of them, like she said, they do choose, but many of them, especially in these countries, it's, it's a caste system and you're just born into it. You're born and you're that lower level of society and your only hope is to become successful as a prostitute, as, 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 a, as a, a trafficking victim. And so it, it's so amazing to see the call that God has placed on your life. I know for her it's been a world. Like she said, it's been two months of going Okay, God, so in two months, you're going to get everything ready. You're going to provide the funds that are needed. Uh, and I'm just going to be faithful in what it is you're asking me to do. And thank you for your faithfulness and your obedience, Rachel, in that matter. And it's, 
I just, again, I, this is something that means so much to us, and I know many of you in the church, this is something that means so much to you, because it's the heartbeat of God. God's heartbeat is that people would have freedom, that people would have a choice to choose to have a relationship with Him or not, right? People, not everyone will choose, but they should be given the opportunity to, to know who Jesus is, to know that, that they have a loving Father who created them and that desires to have a relationship with them. And many of them go through this life, and not just in Thailand, around the world, never even hearing the name of Jesus or knowing who Jesus is. And so I, I'm just so excited. So what we're going to do this morning is we're going to receive an offering for Rachel, and I know it's been a while since we've done this, you know, approximately 18 months or so, but we are going to actually receive an offering this morning. We're not going to put it in the boxes, and so if I can have those who are going to help this morning with the offering, we are going to receive an offering. So everything that we receive this morning in the offering is going to go directly to Rachel and in her missions account, and so helping to fund that and so if you're writing a check you can write out the church and then we will write her out one check together if you're joining us online uh, www.chismag.com slash give and you can click guest speaker and designate it that way as well and so we want to give you the opportunity to do so but again this is our chance to partner with what God is, is, is doing in Rachel's life and in the ministry that she's going to be a part of and so we are just so excited uh, this morning to have the opportunity to partner and help her get there. As she said, she's got about $2,000 left to raise. And I believe this morning that even though we may not be able to hit that amount, I believe we're going to be able to make a significant chunk into that remaining amount that she needs to raise. And so this morning as we receive this offer, and I want you again, as always, I say, just be obedient to what God is asking you to do. Be obedient to that, that voice of the Holy Spirit. And so, Father, we thank you this morning. For this opportunity, God, we thank you that you have called Rachel and that she has responded to the call. And we thank you, Lord, for what this next year is going to hold. God, what's going to happen through the ministry and, and God, reconciliation and restoration and, and freedom and, and just the gospel moving forward. God, light overcoming the darkness throughout the nation and the country of Thailand. And we just thank you for that. And God, we just pray not only this morning as we receive this offering that you would you would take what we what is received this morning you would multiply it beyond anything we could ever imagine but god i pray even now you begin to prepare the hearts and minds of those that rachel and the ministry she's partnering with are going to come into contact with over the next year god that you would begin to till that ground you begin to soften that soil that God, when they come and they, they present them with the gospel or they, they help them, you know, learn how to translate or what the, the many different things that you, God, we pray that you would just be evident in the midst of all of it and that you'd be glorified. And so we just thank you so much, Father, for who you are as the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So this morning, with a joyful heart, Lord, we, we receive this offering and we ask again, you take it, you bless it, Lord, and you would use it. Uh, to glorify you through Rachel and the ministry that she's going to be a part of over in Thailand. And we just thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.